This is a tutorial on making a cutout character using plastic and one of the things which I'm going to have in my view is this window over here which is the scene cast window which is also the window which you'll see down here in the browser and I'm just going to be using that quite a bit in my cutout character um, and before we start I just want to go through a couple of things about this character and a issue which we have with the plastic tool. Okay, one of the main limitations plastic tool is when you're trying to texture with effects. Unfortunately, you cannot get the effects to deform with the transformation. There are one or two which will work, but for the most part, the effects will be like this, where the effect stays static and the deformation passes through that static effect. So if you want a layered effect with the plastic tool, you're going to have to, instead of using effects, you're basically going to have to use textures. So for example, this one here would be using textures from the style editor and if we try and animate this we will see that these textures will follow along so if you're going to want a textured feel, you're going to have to make the textures beforehand if you're going to want to deform that mesh. One of the effects that the character we're working on has is a lighting effect. I'm just quickly going to show you how I made that lighting effect. Um, you basically use the body highlight node under the light effects nodes and if you use this node what it does is it basically uses the transparency of the image the alpha channel and it offsets that. So basically it's copying the shape which you've got and it is moving it slightly off center and then only affecting the areas which are not covered by that shifted version of your original image. So if we wanted to, for example, move it kind of negative in X and negative in Y, we will see that we should get the same shape which we've got over here as the highlight. Um, so What I have done for my variant of the effect is I've created a highlight and shadow both with the same node. So you will take your one node 
for the highlight and then you will duplicate the effect but you will do it in the negative of the shadow Make these negative, we should have the effect on the opposite areas, and then if we just use a darker color, we will then get our shadow effect. And then to make it more manageable within the network, you can group certain of the effects and we can just create a macro effect which will give us a single node and if we click on that single node we will get both of our effects. Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial for a cutout character. This is going to be a cutout character with multiple poses. So you can do cutout characters with full turn rounds, although you will very rarely use a full back pose. You're more often going to use a three quarter back pose. And more often than not, you will have a cutout character in a slightly offset frontal pose not a dead center frontal pose like this. Um, you would usually work with either an offset frontal pose or a three quarter pose. But in this case, we are just going to be using a front and a side pose. Um, now, when you are doing a cutout character, you basically are going to have to name things. And the naming conventions, um, which I prefer to use would be FR for front, BK for back, 3Q for three quarters, and SD for side. Um, now, you will very often have things where you will have a left or right, um, and personally, I prefer not to use left or right. I would prefer to use side 1 or side 2. The reason I prefer 1 or 2 is if you have, for example, this side pose over here, and we were to flip the character, everything which is left would be right and everything that is right would flip, be left. And if I was doing a three quarter back pose, I would, it would be 3QB or 3 quarter back. Before we start with the process of cutting up the character, I'm just going to render it and you'll see that the character has the light and shadow effect. Now the problem with the light and shadow effect is obvious here. If we were to flip the character, the light would be coming from the wrong side. So we're just going to do a little work around with the effect before we deal with the character because it will be easier to have the effect working and then copy it rather than have to set up a workaround for every single part we cut out. So what we will do is we will bring out our schematic and I'm going to create two pegs. We do not necessarily need to do this with a peg but 
it's one of my personal preferences. So first peg, I'm just going to rename the character's name. And I'm going to name it SRT, which is for scale, rotation, and translation. And then I am going to make a, another peg, which I am going to make the child of that, and I'm going to rename this into Now, the SRT is going to be to control the entire character's position. So if I need to move the entire character, I will use this instead of moving any of the specific parts of the columns, and thus I can control the character's position on the screen without having to actually affect anything which I'm going to animate later. And this over here I'm going to use to control the shadows. Okay, so we've changed to this layout where I have the function editor. And what we're going to do is we're going to control these effects so that when the peg is on this side, the light should be on this side. When the peg is on that side, the light should be on that side. So, we're going to take a look over here in stage. And what we'll see is that the pegs that I have renamed still have peg 1 and peg 2 over here and when we refer to these pegs in what we're going to be doing we're going to be referring to them as peg 1 and peg 2 in this case we're going to be referring to peg 2 and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these effects over here and we're going to be taking a look at the offset x and we're going to be looking at the x values and we're going to start off with this effect over here and it is currently set at around about negative 1.5 um, and negative and 1.5 and what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the shadow cannot be greater than 1.5 or less than negative 1.5. To do that we're going to use an expression. So we're going to go over here and click on expression but first we're going to have to select the frame over here and in order to do that we are going to use a clamp function which will clamp a value between two ranges and the value which we're going to take is going to be the peg which is peg 2 and then we are going to use east-west um, when 2D animation was initially developed by people like the Fleischers at Disney um, they used field charts to lay out the animation in north, south, east, west, and that's why it is east, west rather than y in what you'd usually expect in engineering or 3D graphics. Then, if we put in a comma, we can then put in our minimum value, which, as I said, is negative 1.5. And then we are going to put in our maximum value, which is 1.5. And we're going to apply it. See that our values both here turn to 0. And if we go over here and we select our peg and move it, typo, you'll see that it changes. Um, and that it changes very quickly. Um, if we pay careful attention to the arms and the side of the face, we should see that it disappears when things on this side and 
reappears with the pigs on this side. But we would like a little bit more control over this effect. So what we will do is we will divide the value of the peg. So if we have the two's position, we could, for example, divide over 10. And that would give a much smaller value. But that's not the best way to do it. While at the level of expressions, it's probably going to have almost no effect, it is always better practice when using division computers to actually multiply by a pre-divided value. So in this case, 0 0.1 and multiplying by 0 0.1 would be better than dividing. So we'll go back to our expression and I'm going to do it by Zero point zero zero one. See how that works. See that's a bit too small. Zero one. That is about wanted, which will allow me to control the light reasonably well. And then I'm just going to copy this expression and I'm going to use it for the shadows. But the shadows are on the other side of the body. So in order to make sure that the shadows stay on the other side of the body, I'm going to use a negative value for the peg. Just apply that. You can see that these are opposed. And we should now have shadows and highlights this way around. Here we should have our finished effect where we can find how much the shadows are by just the body shadows a little bit. Okay, I'm now going to create all the levels I'm going to cut the character up into and I'm going to name them by naming the view first then the body part and then the character's name in other software packages, I may name them different, you know, in other ways, but in OpenTunes, what you are going to see is, because of the way they are listed in the 
X sheet, you can see what side and what body part the view is in the X sheet. And if you put the character's name first, it is going to be less clear. Okay, so now I have named all the levels, and as you'll see on the side, I have excluded making levels for things like the pupils, where you only see one from the side view. Um, the reason I've made different levels for each view is if you're doing a cutout character and you have lots of drawings which you're swapping around, for example, expressions on eyes or different hands, it can become very difficult to say which are the three quarter drawings and which are the side drawings and which are the front drawings. If you split them up like this, you can just drag in the side level and only deal with those drawings, or the three quarter level and only deal with those drawings. And to organize it further, I'm going to the scene cast and I am going to create a folder for the character I'm just going to move the drawings relative to the rig into that folder and then I am just going to create a folder for the front use another folder for the side so if I am looking to drag in drawings for side view, I will only have to come to the side folder. Or the folder. And same with the front views. The final thing I'm going to do before I cut up the character is I'm just going to rename all the columns and then copy and paste the character into those columns.